It's time for Screen Junkies Movie Fights. That's a great story. Let's pick it up later. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Movie Fights in full effect. I'm your host, Hal Rudnick, and we've got an exciting match today. It's two friends turned frenemies. Oh, yeah. We're about to have a major collision. Uh, and let's meet our combatants. What is up, Stacy Howard? Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting today. I'm glad to be amongst friends, maybe enemies at the end of this. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be a good time. Excellent. Uh, why don't you plug something? Oh, gosh. Well, we have a show together. It's called Six we Degrees, do. a feature film. You can um, find us every Wednesday morning at 1030. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Stacy O. Howard. No E, no I, just Y. Great. Yeah, and um, word on the street is that if, uh, if, if, if things, like if shit gets too raw here today, <laughs> like Jesus. your podcast is going to end. Oh, man. It's going to be Caputzo. Is yeah. that a word? Caputzo. Caputzo. I'm just kidding. You guys will be friends after this. But oh, right sure. now, we are going to drop the gloves and let's meet the other combatant. Welcome, Brianne Chandler, Ms. Movies. Ms. Movies is my name. I have two kids, so I miss... Movies. That it's not that I know all the movies. It's that I miss them. Oh I can't yes, see them. you don't get around. I don't to them. get around. So right. if you don't know something, it's because I didn't see it. Hey. Listen, if it ain't on <laughs> TNT, I ain't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, stars or TNT? I neither. I'm okay. a cord cutter. Cord cutter, my friends. Right on. Mm -hmm. um, Netflix or Hulu? I go Netflix. All right, mainly sure. Mainly because I don't have Hulu. Therefore. Um, you know what? Why don't you plug that podcast again? That podcast is Six Degrees of Future Film, where you can find myself and Stacey Howard. I also do a show called Film Therapy, where we talk about how movies affect our lives. It's amazing. Also on the channel. Amazing. You know what? Movies can be cathartic. They can be healing. They can be therapeutic. And they can. Yeah. And they can also mm -hmm. scar you for life. Yeah. They I've certainly been... can. And I'm the film therapist. Uh, I play one on the internet, but just for that show. I might have to come in and talk to you about the time that I watched Human Centipede with my oh, mom. Oh, <laughs> was mom that aired on Screen Junkies? Yes, it was, it was, it was aired on Screen Junkies. Uh, you know what, it, it brought us closer together, the, the way uh, a traumatic experience mm -hmm. brings two people. Did you finish uh, the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy with your mom? Because I know that's something they used to do. They make you watch that with your mom as yes, well. Yes, um, hopefully uh, my mom and I can, wa can watch Fifty <laughs> Shades Freed. Um, <laughs> Uh, at some point in the yes, future. Yes, and enjoy the boredom. Um, <laughs> so, the way this works, uh, we have three judges, myself, our fact checker, and our social media chairwoman. Let's meet the rest of the judges. Holding it down on the facts today, Mr. Lon Harris. What up, Lon? Hey, Hello. hey, Alan. Good, uh, good to be here. And, uh... First fact check of the show, Caputzo, not a word. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank Darn you. Darn it. Webster's. Thank you for the verification on that. That's well, the here. kind of juice you're going to be getting out of Lon <laughs> Harris today. Thanks, man. All oh. facts. All facts. And uh, checking out all of your messages and on Meme Patrol. Meme Patrol. Daniel Radford. Hi, buds. Hello. Um, so as I explain, like every video, if you guys want to vote in the poll, it is YouTube only. There is no Twitter poll. Um, the poll will go up once the questions are, are up and both fighters have given their answers. So if you can't vote yet, it's because it ain't on there yet. Um, what you want to do is you're going to, um, when you're voting live, turn annotations on and off. You can do that by clicking the settings gear icon on the bottom right next to the full screen option. Turn annotations on and off. And then that should uh, refresh the poll so you don't have to like, you know, click refresh or anything like that. Keep those eyeballs on our screen. Um, <laughs> then you're going to click the poll in the top right corner of the video, and that is where you can vote. I will also be reading all of your comments. Um, make them funny. I love you. Okay, bye. Nice. Thank you, Danielle. So, uh, yes, and please send us those sick memes. Send us your dank memes. Send us your tired, your poor, your huddled memes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll uh, talk about them. That's about it there. Great. So again, how this works. We have three regular round questions, which will be decided by myself and then Lon. And if we have a tie, boom, we go to Danielle to let your poll decide. And then after those three questions, it's any person's ball game because we go to a four question speed round. So one of our players can be up three to zero, but then come back via 
the speed round. Um, I think we've uh, pretty much addressed anything. Lon, you feeling good? I feel great. Danielle, you pumped? So pumped. Um, so ready for these sick maymays? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Ladies, are you feeling it? Definitely. <laughs> yes, need a puke bucket, yeah. but I'm going to be okay. You know what? Okay. Puke live on the air, that is some good internet. Ratings. JTE, roll that pack. <laughs> Prepare to die. Ladies and gentlemen. No. It's main event time. Finish him! Yes! So sick. JTE, the best package in the biz. <laughs> All right, let's go to question numero uno. Wow, okay, it's a biggie. What is the best sci-fi movie of the 21st century so far? The best sci-fi movie of the 21st century so far. Is that so far necessary? I mean, the best sci-fi movie of the, tw like, wh why, why is the so far in there? We don't. Just we to be clear. We don't want people picking their favorite 2072 sci-fi movie. Okay, so you can't say Blade Runner, Blade Runner 2079. No, absolutely not. Gotcha. Yes. All right, good to know. All right, the best sci-fi movie of the 21st century so far, and let's start with Stacey Howard. Okay, so <clears throat> the best science fiction film, uh, it doesn't have to have an ec epic battle between, you know, battleships. It doesn't need a bunch of like high tech computers. It simply asks you the question about humanity that we find impossible to answer now because it hasn't happened yet. Uh, so my choice today is going to be director Alex Garland's Ex Machina, or is it Ex Machina? How should we pronounce it? Sounds like you said the same thing. Okay, all right. We're going to go with that. <laughs> Uh, he has described this movie as being 10 minutes from now, meaning if a huge tech company, some big tech nerd comes up and says, we have an Ava, she's here, we're going to be surprised, but we're not going to be shocked. Okay, so that is the essence of a great science fiction film, is it asks you not only what's our future, but how will we end? Thank you. Okay, opening salvo from Stacy, Brianne Chandler. Okay, so the best science fiction film of the 21st century so far came out in 2006. And it's a little movie that takes place in 2027 about a chaotic world in which women have become infertile. And a, act, a former activist is going to agree to take a now miraculously pregnant woman to a sanctuary at sea. And this is Children of Men, directed by Alfonso Cuaron, starring Clive Owen, Julianne Moore, and my cocaine. <laughs> and there you have it. Great, all right. <laughs> Children of Men, Ex Machina. This is a real Sophie's Choice for me. Ladies, battle it out. Okay, so uh, I, I could talk a lot about, you know, the great visuals of this film, the, the acting caliber of the three amazing leads who are all superstars in their own right, but I feel like Children of Men has that as well, and I love that movie. So when I was trying to rack my brain about how to argue against this, I really went to what would be the ending of these films. Now, judges, mm -hmm. do I have permission to talk about the spoilers of these movies? They've been out for a few years now. Is that okay? We got yes. a thumbs up. Spoil away. Spoil, Spoil away. Spoiler, y'all. If you guys right. haven't seen Children Spoiler of Men by now, yeah, that's on you. Legit. Yeah. Yeah. You should see both these movies. They're amazing. So, in Children of Men, you have a, an amazing, sweeping, dramatic story of humanity. But, I mean, in the end, you know, this crisis that they have of women can't reproduce it's solved. You know, the woman has the baby, you know, it's got everything, it's healthy, eyes, fingers, toes, 2, 10, 11, whatever, and uh, she gets on the boat, she's with the humanitarian people, and, you know, you have a happy ending there. You don't exactly know what's going to happen, but it's hmm. implied that now we have hope. In Ex Machina, guys. You have despair. Yeah, exactly, and I and love it. And who wants a movie with despair? I do. That's a real science fiction See, film. I want a movie with hope. I want to know that the gener we're going to have to rely on what's next, and that's what Alfonso Cuaron really wanted to do. He didn't want the movie to, st to stop at the end credits. He wanted it to start at the end credits so that we can discuss it even further beyond that, which is something that I like. I feel like Ex Machina... <sighs> Gosh, I've been working on this argument for a really long time, ladies and gentlemen, and I know you're all going to really hate me. Um, but yeah, right. I just have to say, the objectification of women in Ex Machina is something that I 
don't find to be make it the best science fiction film of the 21st century because it's something we constantly see. Women are constantly objectified in science fiction. They put parts of women in a wardrobe, for God's sakes. Like, if that's not objectification, I don't know what is. And I just want to see something a little more dynamic when it comes to gender roles in a film. Well, you could argue that she wasn't even really a woman to begin with. But to they be gave objectified. her sexuality. She's a machine. She's a computer. She's trying to be smarter than us. So, she, so she's trying to use all her tools that might be available. All I her say sexual it, tools. Her. Everything her about her is about sex. And because she is AI. Because she's going against a man. But because, because she is AI, they man. specifically put that. They added that to her. They didn't have to add sexuality, but they did add the sexuality. And there's a reason they did that. They used it as a weapon. Because that's the whole point of a tool. Turing test is to see if a machine is going to be like human like and if you can tell mm -hmm. that they are machines they're going to try and use yeah, but everything you know at their disposal okay. he's going against a or she it is going against a young shy boy mm -hmm. you could say what Donald Gleason's character is and is trying to use everything in her arsenal to beat him and she effing okay. wins you guys but listen she how 9000 didn't sorry, have to babe. have a relationship with Dave right in order to bring him down in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Mm -hmm. This but movie is to the, the 2001 A Space Odyssey I'm just saying, of the 21st we could century. do it without having to sexualize a woman. I, don't, I didn't see her as sexualized in a sense because he, she, she wasn't was made a woman. of his porn preferences. How was she not sexualized? Yeah, but that wasn't her fault, though. That wasn't well, the machine's fault. choice. It, 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 that. That's my, that's my I, I think that she used the tools <laughs> that she was given in order to rise above it all, which is exactly what machines do. They're not human. They don't see themselves as objectified or as anything horrible happening to them. They just know that in, in the end, they have to be the superior race. We are the inferior ones. Once we are discovered to be dumber than these human beings, I mean, that's our future right there, is the machines escape, she kills them, she gets, well, kills them, they don't actually die in the end, but she gets out and she has, yes. in a sense, achieved victory because she used everything that she had. That's what machines do. She's not a woman, she's an it. Now listen, I want to go back to Children of Men and tell you why it's superior to Ex Machina, and that is because it is so of our time right now, especially with the wake of the European migrant crisis of 2015, the presidential election in 2016, the refugees that we're seeing right now, this is real. This is 10 minutes from now. So I feel like we are living in a very children of men world. And because it's so depiction, a depiction of what we are going through right now, that's why I feel that it's superior to Ex Machina. I will see that and I will raise you the same thing that in Ex Machina we are absolutely going uh, with this theme of what has technology done to us, what has been, um, you know, available to, like, companies, data usage or data mining or whatever it's called, that they use everything against us in order to achieve their financial, economic, technological dreams, and it's eventually going to destroy us and steal who we are as a society, as mankind. We are going I would rather see the hope. I would rather see the hope of the future, which is what we're seeing right now. That's a fantasy. Um, That's not sci-fi. Oh, that's uh, happening right, all right now. All right, let me, uh, I just want to uh, pull back <laughs> in, and take an overview terms. for a second. <laughs> yes. um, I'd love to hear from both of you what constitutes a great sci-fi mm. film. Okay. And then tell me how your movie fits in. But I'd love to hear it just in general, okay. what ha what you feel constitutes a great sci-fi film. Uh, Stacey, you started earlier, so we're going to start with okay. uh, Brienne right now. Um, to me, what constitutes a great sci-fi film is something that is very reflective of society today, something that you would say, this is where we'll be in 2027. Maybe we will be there. I feel like maybe that's a little early. But um, I, I like science fiction that is very real, and I like science fiction that has a message of hope at the end of the day. My personal preferences. Great, Thank and you. Uh, and how does your film fit into uh, that? My one more film time? Fits, fits into that because it does have themes of hope and faith. You know, it is like basically the story of Mary, if you will, and modern day nativity. Mm -hmm. And um, I just like I I like how it's laid out in terms of the story is not presented to you so concretely. It's, it's not told to you in a narrative setting like we're going to tell you every step of the way what's happening you have to kind of figure that out for yourself i also like a science fiction film that when it ends you are talking about it all the time mm -hmm. i mean i'm talking about children of men today and i wouldn't be talking about that i don't know before it happened but i'm glad that i'm talking about it now
Sure. And, you know, uh, we did ask you the question. Yeah, so that's, so that's how partly we're why you're about talking it. about it today. I mean, I did but, talk last time but, I was on Movie Fights. But you are talking about say. it nonetheless. Yes. Uh, last time I was on Movie Fights, yeah. um, I actually brought it up in my argument for Blade Runner because I, they asked what was the best movie of the 80s, and I said it's Blade Runner. And Kevin Turan of the LA Times says that Children of Men is Blade Runner of this century. Maybe instead of Miss Movies, you should be Miss. Children of Men. Okay, uh, <laughs> Stacy, uh, talk to us about your definition of a science fiction film. Okay, uh, a truly great science fiction film doesn't stay with you because everything worked out in the end. It terrifies you because it shows you our ultimate fate and admit and makes you admit something that you don't want to. So, Children of Men is great, but Ex Machina, in my opinion, is going to outlast it because of that ending. I love both both movies. I think they're on that that same spectrum and same genre of. It's not so much about the high tech, it's about what's going to happen to us, but one answers it in a very positive and hopeful light. But for me, that's more of a, a fantasy genre for science fiction. I wanted to show us what's gonna be our ultimate downfall, what is gonna take us to extinction. Gotcha. And um, how does your film fit into that? Uh, I mean, it, it just shows you our, our ultimate strengths are going to be the ones that bring us down in the end. So, I mean, yes, we are, you know, these great conquerors and, and we have the knowledge to build all these tools, but those are ultimately going to destroy us because we weren't strong enough uh, in, in ourselves and our hearts to not let us, let it overtake us. Gotcha. Um, final thoughts, if you want to take down the other person's movie Don't or throw any last think, barbs. Like, after a time, Ava's just going to shut down and just kind of like be on the side of the nah, road. Like, nah. Oscar, my Isaac batteries are out. That. Nah, my she batteries are batteries. gone. <laughs> no, she, I, I think she's going to find a way. She's smarter than she's that. Solar I mean, powered. She, she overpowered and outthought and outsmarted these two men who were some of the most brilliant minds of her time, and she wasn't even human. I mean, but she played to their, their human weaknesses, which is ultimately was going to happen to us because they don't have machines and AI it doesn't have the human feelings human insecurities human faults that we're going to have it's the strongest parts of us in every sense time wow what a colossal battle man versus machine children versus machina <laughs> uh, this was a great ah. battle um, I love how you both tied this in uh, with some kind of relevance to today. How we are, it makes sense that we are 10 minutes away from this kind of AI uh, being infused into our lives. I mean, it seems like every CES, we're yeah. seeing something that's a step closer to that. And Brianne, you also tied your film into today with the refugee crisis uh, it going on in uh, Syria, Europe, etc. Um, the uh, the political derisiveness happening around the globe and right here in America. So there was a lot of interesting stuff. So then I go to your takes on your films and sci-fi. So you were uh, preaching more of a um, like a, a, a darker vision of sci-fi. You wanted a sci-fi with hope. I mean, from where I'm sitting as a judge, those are both subjective opinions. And um, I don't think there is any hard and fast rule. So I wasn't sold on that either way. That just seemed like personal preference. So it just gets down then to the actual nitty gritty of this of your films and um, at the end of the day you had uh, you had some interesting food for thought talking about the objectification of women in the film but um, I think you did a nice uh, to use a fencing term parry when you brought up the fact that Dom Hall Gleason's character was like a child and he was putty in her hands and he was manipulated and it was relevant to the storyline um, and and you uh, I, I think you dismiss that criticism well. And uh, I think just as far as the groundwork that you, that you laid with the impact of your film, at the end of the day, I gotta go with Stacy and Ex Machina. Juan. Uh, well, first, uh, uh, a fact to add in. Uh, so Alex Garland has been asked about how does Ava recharge herself once she escapes the lab. <laughs> His theory is that she has some sort of technology like induction plates that she could easily you know, plug herself into the power grid outside. 
Alex Garland doesn't think that would be an issue that Ava would be able to uh, till the apocalypse to live on <laughs> as long as she can access solar power, guys. You know, as long as she Ava's can access Ava's walking the around out there grid. like a Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> right. She could just go to a supercharged station and 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 hook herself in. Uh, in terms of the arguments, I thought, yeah, uh, when we also got a mention of the Turing test. That, of course, tests a machine's ability to exhibit intelligence that's indistinguishable from a human. So that's mm -hmm. how the Turing test goes. I can't tell if I'm talking to a machine or a person. Uh, Sometimes I feel that way when I'm talking to you. Oh, <laughs> because you are a robot of knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I guess. I don't knowledge know. Knowledge robot. You're the professor. Know, knowledge robot. Yeah. That's kind of good. That sounds almost good. <laughs> Uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the fight, I thought everybody did a really good job, especially of yeah, as you said, making the case that their film sort of has relevance. It's speaking to something that sort of matters about the modern world. I kind of thought that was a watch. Uh, unlike you, though, Hal, I actually thought that Brienne's argument about ex machina sort of objectifies women in this way that's kind of unnecessary for the story that it's telling. I actually thought that was pretty compelling, and I didn't really think that we heard. Uh, you know, a total counter argument to that. We sort of got like within the within the reality of the movie, Ava doesn't feel objectified because she's a machine. Like I agree with that, but sort of the movie doesn't really necessarily need that angle. I thought that was a really interesting take. Uh, so I'm going with Brienne. Boom! We are locked up at one one. Daniel Radford. All right. So as of right now on the polls, with 65% to 34, um, the polls have spoken, and they are going with Ex Machina. Yes. Wow. That is the more popular one in culture. But I love children of men so much. <laughs> I do need to um, say that. And so just a, just a quick things. Um, a lot of people uh, were talking about Inception, a lot of Donnie Darko, a lot of Attack the Block. Um, people wanted to know what is on How's the Pell, which interestingly enough, before the show started, he was like, does this look like a boat to me? <laughs> <laughs> Blowing you uh, up. Blowing Hal up. Yeah, we, sorry, Hal. Um, I'm 90% <laughs> sure they think it's a brooch. Um, oh, really? Uh, can we get a poll? <laughs> can we get a poll? <laughs> Yo. Um, and on Twitter, we've got um, Joanna at Artists Reward saying, Dancing as Oscar Ivick versus Clive Owen saving the world is a tough choice. Mm -hmm. I was surprised we didn't get more about oh the dancing gosh, scene. The dance. I almost danced yeah. myself and X put it in. But I, I know, thought, hold yeah. back. They did this move. Hold back. Uh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, <laughs> Brianne, it, it, it may have served you if you did a Michael Caine impression. <laughs> All I have is the name Mike O'Kane. <laughs> she was so because you say mm. my Genius. cocaine. My cocaine. And you put it together. Oh, my cocaine. My cocaine. Nice. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna You've keep never done that. There. I'm okay. gonna keep that yeah. one in my back pocket <laughs> with my cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, by the way, uh, I want to give a shout out uh, this pin. It's an owl from my buddy uh, Joe. Uh, he gave it to me and uh, check out his stuff at pinfiend, pinfiend.com. Nice. Cool. An owl. Is, ooh, it, is ooh. there a significance to it being an owl or it's just owls? owls you know owls. what? Um, I like to think it's one of the uh, owls of Gahool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that would have been my pick question. for best sci-fi <laughs> fantasy. That. No, that's more of a fantasy. That. All right, it's 1-0, Stacey Howard. Let's go to the second question. This is all because Scott Mance didn't return my call. Oh, boy. Pitch a, 2018, <laughs> pitch a 2018 film version of any musical. 2018 Ooh. film version of any musical. We're going to start with Brianne Chandler. All right. Uh, this musical opened in June of 2003 at the San Francisco Koran Theater. You may know it as Wicked, which tells the story of two unlikely friends, Elphaba and Galinda, who later changes her name to Galinda. Uh, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West, as well as the Good Witch, who struggle with opposing personalities and viewpoints and rivalry over the same love interest, the reaction to the wizard's corrupt government, and un ultimately, Elphaba's fall from grace. This is based on the 1995 a novel by Gregory Maguire, titled Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West, with music and lyrics by Stephen Schwartz. Um, and right now, which I just discovered, as of February 9th, 2018, with its 5,960th performance, it has surpassed O Calcutta to become Broadway's seventh longest running show. The first one is Phantom of the Opera. It's got a ways to go to get there. It's got at least like 10,000 more. Lots of stats, lots of stats. Lots of stats. What about Cats? Cats is now and forever. Cats is not up. Well, it might be up there in the uh, longest running. Also, Wicked is the second highest grossing musical of all time, passing over a billion dollars just past Phantom, and it is right under The Lion King. Lion King's what? got those bucks, yo. I didn't pick Lion King, though, because that's already coming out. 
Yes. Okay. So wicked. Stacy. All right, here we go. My choice is going to be Singing in the Rain, directed by Michel Gondry. Okay, so when I think of the great visual films of our time, my thought always jumps to Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is Michel Gondry's film. It's one of my favorite movies, and um, it, it's, it's a, a, a simple story. A boy and a girl break up and get back together, but Michel Gondry takes his wildly imaginative visuals and adds it to this story that has such a fluidity to it, and uh, uh, such a back and forth, these, these great visual storytelling. Are we making this a on. musical? Yeah, it's a musical. I'm about to dog you. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Hold yeah. on, girlfriend. Just, okay. I would be excited for Eternal Sunshine with a Spotless Mind, the musical. Oh, I'm just no, saying. no, no. That, okay. I thought you were right. asking oh, if, no. if no, this no. is going to be a musical. Yeah, no. So it's the right musical <laughs> okay. directed by Michel Gondry, but his past um, IMDb films network is going to tell you that he would be a great choice for the director of this movie so directors today they don't have quite the the pacing and the movement and the timing that a a musical of the 40s and 50s would that was coming off kind of the vaudeville-esque era where you have the um it, it's like it's a broadway stage and you're playing to an audience so if you look at eternal sunshine the spotless mind that really has that same tone to it so uh, if i want to take a a traditional musical that is happy-go-lucky that everyone loves but hasn't been revisited in a while, I want to go with Singing in the Rain because it is a beloved favorite of people the world over and I want to bring it back into the stratosphere with a modern director who has a modern image for musicals. It's very difficult for a lot of directors to do that today. He is one of the ones that could do it. Great. Slug it out, you two. Um, my problem with him, my problem with Singing in the Rain is first of all, the original is amazing. And I just watched it actually three weeks ago with my daughter. It was the first time I had ever showed it to her. She was asking about Debbie Reynolds. It's a long story. I'm not going to get into all that. But anyways, she was asking about Debbie Reynolds. And I was like, let me show you a film with her. Let me show you the best film with Debbie Reynolds. And it is Singing in the Rain. The duo of Daniel O'Connor, Gene Kelly, and Debbie Reynolds, that as far as acting, singing, dancing, everything about them, I just don't know how you would find actors that could come to that caliber, could come to that level. I don't know. I just don't know if anyone would be able to do it. And I know that Michael Gondry's done a ton of like music videos, and I'm almost tempted to say, what if David Fincher were to do a Singing in the Rain remake? That oh. might actually spark my interest. <laughs> That'd um, be really dark. dark. But I, <laughs> really I think I would be most concerned with who he would get to choreograph this, because that is where my interest lies, is who's going to be making up these dance moves. I feel like, I don't know, Singing in the Rain, the original, is Debbie Reynolds behind the curtain and this new one is going to be the actress in front of the curtain and then they lift it and they're like, oh yeah, the better one's behind. Why was I even looking at this one in the front? If you know Singing in the Rain, you know what I'm talking about. Some deep cut Singing in the Rain references. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, well, I'd love to hear from both of you. Uh, who would you cast in these okay. uh, in, in these modern uh, versions of your films? First of all, I didn't give my director, so I apologize for that. Kenny Ortega is one that I would pick to direct uh, Wicked because he just has a long history of directing musicals. He's behind the High School Musical franchise as well as the Descendants franchise. He also did Newsies. And he's not just a director, but he's also a choreographer. And that's kind of why I picked him, because dance is very important to me. Um, but for Glinda, now we got to, I would love to go with the original actresses, but we have to bring this to a younger generation. So for Glinda, I'm going to go with Taylor Swift. And for Elphaba, I'm going with Zendaya. Ooh. That's what we're looking at there. Got to bring it down. Bring it down so my daughter would want to see it, which she loves Zendaya. And if we throw Zac Efron in there, she's automatically going to see it because she has to see everything that Troy is in. That's a high school musical reference. Gotcha. Uh, Stacy. who would you cast in your update of Singing in the Rain? All right. So for the two male leads, uh, you need to go with someone who is charming, sweet, and ultimately your your greatest fantasy for, you know, a gentleman. So I'm going to go with uh, everyone's favorite dad-like characters, uh, Paul Rudd and James Marston, who we both know have uh, great movement. We saw James Marston in Enchanted, so we know that he is going to be a, a great presence on screen. I think Paul Rudd's charming and comedic timing and everything is going to so, carry us over. And, um, oh, so, oh, sorry. So just to clarify, um, who's in the, um, and it's Donald O'Connor, uh, by the way, who's in the Donald O'Connor? Uh, Daniel. Uh, I'm no sorry. worries. I apologize. Uh, um, uh, who's in the Donald O'Connor role? Who's in the Gene Kelly role? Um, 
um, for Gene Kelly, I'd go with the James Marsden role. He has a little more um, experience, I would say, in the musical era. So we're going to go with that. And then for my female lead, I also chose uh, Zendaya because she is the hot right. ticket That's of right. the moment. And she's amazing. And she just proved herself in The Greatest Showman. So I'd love to see more from her. Gotcha. The great uh, diverse cast. Uh, I'll throw another question out there. Hmm. Um, why do we need your movie right now? Wicked, uh, oh. it's been around for several years. Mm -hmm. It's never been made into a feature film. Number one. Singing in the Rain uh, it, uh, is a classic. Mm -hmm. um, why do we need this right now? Jump in there. Uh, for Singing in the Rain, the essential question of it is, what is going to happen to the film industry during this transition? Theirs is going to be, you know, it from silent films going to talkies, how's this going to affect us all? That can absolutely be translated today because everyone wants to know what's going to be streaming like versus, you know, in the theaters. Um, how's everything going to be affected in the film industry with, like, CGI actors? Are they real actors? Should they be nominated for awards? There's a lot of the technological advances that are going to be argued about how does that affect movie-going audiences and filmmaking. So you, you don't necessarily have to do that same subject matter. You could transition it and adapt it to today. I think it's absolutely absolutely essential. That's why we need it now. We're asking all those questions now. Okay. We need Wicked right now because we have actually not seen Wicked ever done before in the theater and musicals are hot right now because of The Greatest Showman. Let's do something that was on Broadway that can be on the screen that we would like to see for the first time so we can make it be the best one that we have ever seen. Um, we already have the best one of Singing in the Rain, so we don't need an updated version. We don't need a changed updated version. We have already seen Michael Gondry's style of filmmaking done as a musical. It's called The Umbrellas of Cherbourg, or however you say that. I'm not quite sure. What do you say over there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you said it right. Sure. Great. Excellent. So, um, so I haven't uh, quite heard from you. Why uh, is Wicked a lesser choice? Wicked, I mean, I saw that, you know, as a, as a young um, Broadway-esque dancer gal with all my friends, and I, I was incredibly moved by that. I loved it, but I feel like with the, the soundtrack that's been so popular and now Idina Menzel with Frozen, it's all a little bit saturated. You know, it's it's been on the minds of everyone for a while. I want something that maybe has been not forgotten about, but that we need to revisit because it, it's like a it's like an ex lover that you hug. It's like a teddy bear you find from your childhood. You're like, oh yeah, I did love that thing. Oh wow, I'm so happy that this is here. You want to remind yourself of the happy perfect times of when you were a kid. And I I think singing in the rain is gonna translate across all audiences and just be perfect for this time. Um, and why should uh, we either not remake uh, Singing in the Rain, or why is Wicked a better choice? Um, well, why Wicked is a better choice, aside from the fact that we haven't done it before, but we've seen it so much in popular culture without it ever being something that's been on a main screen. We've seen it in Glee, Brothers and Sisters, The Simpsons, South Park, New Girl, Zombieland. Drake has sampled from the song Popular. Like, it's everywhere. And so it's time for us to finally get it, to finally see it realized on screen. I just think it's time. I'm ready to give it my money tomorrow. Time, wow. Whew. The witch versus the rain. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna work oh, on that one. Why? Well, <laughs> oh yeah, a, a wait, witch gets wait, wait, melted. Wait. Yeah, uh, there's one. There's one more thing. Oh, I called time. There's one more thing that Stacy and I wanted to. Oh, were you we gonna? Had, we had something. Did you have yeah. a song plan? No, we have a pitch. We'd like to co -pitch. together. We're together. gonna pitch you guys on a wait, movie. What? On a remake. This yes. is happening, you guys. It's this never is been happening. Done okay, what's the, what, what, the, They're going rogue. This we're has not been rogue. planned. We're absolutely going okay. to format, you what, guys. What is Here's happening? Here's what we're going to do. We're okay. going to take Xanadu. Xanadu. And we're going to update it. Come on, guys. We're gonna and call it Xanax? This. No. No. Oh. no. This is going to be directed by Toby Hooper. Yep. Mm -hmm. From <laughs> Texas Chainsaw also Massacre. Gonna be also okay. going to be starring Zendaya. Because we love her. We love her. She's going to be in that, in the lead role, Olivia Newton-John. We're going to throw out pretty much the script because it's terrible. We're Except gonna keep for the, the muses. skating. Yeah. The, the muses. Mm -hmm. The original song. Yep. We're going to get the guys from La La Land who did all the songs for it's The Greatest Showman. Beautiful. We're going to do a whole new thing. Guys, Xanadu We're going to bring back skating, yeah. guys. Xanadu We're it back. was not given its due. Uh, yeah, that's right. Time. So we want to do it correctly. This is going right. to be the wildest, craziest nutbag story you have ever seen on film. It's going to be amazing. Written by Luke Basson. Yes, written by Luke Basson. <laughs> that's right. You the 
original right. Xanadu, right. also starring Gene Kelly. Yes, he was. Yes. yes, as well his final film. Mm -hmm. That's what right. You know? That's sad. Let's I not know. talk about that. You know what? This has no bearing on the round whatsoever. <laughs> 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 oh, darn. But uh, you, I like the fact that you, you you said the director was Tobe Hooper. He's the director yeah. of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And the King's Speech. And Life Force. And Les Miserables. No, no, that's uh, Hooper. You're saying Hooper. He say, he say Toby Hooper. You're saying Tom Hooper. I don't, saying. Saying. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. You said Toby Hooper. You said Toby Hooper. Sure, you Hooper. want no. Toby Hooper, the director of goddamn Leatherface. Let's do it. Yes. God has got to do it. Want and guys. Life Force, Hal, and Life Force. Guys, sure, I, I'm a smoothie, okay? Listen, we are, a, we are, okay, no, we're, we're, we're zooming director. past the most okay. important okay. thing. Sorry, Toby sorry. Hooper, <laughs> or Tobe Hooper, directing <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the musical. Guys, is he dead? All Zendaya's right. in that too. Yeah. Sure. Casting Thank you. Everywhere. Thank you for that extra delicious <laughs> morsel. A little extra comfort. Um, Juan, <laughs> let's forget that last part and talk to me about that battle. I was like, where did they get Tobe Hooper of all the names? <laughs> we knew the guy that directed Les Mis. Yeah, yeah, we wanted that guy. Tom. All right. Sorry, Sorry everyone. Uh, Juan, uh, we're okay, ready. please. Thank some, you. Some facts. <laughs> Cats is the number four longest running Broadway show of all yeah. time. 7,485 performances. Uh, Trent Reznor and David Fincher are working on a rock opera based on Whoa. Fight Club. Whoa. So you yes. may get your David Fincher musical this, wish not, may I come true. Wait. I can't wait. Uh, in terms of the fight, I thought it was a really interesting fight. I felt like Brienne got a little hung up on the... We've never seen a Wicked movie before, whereas we've seen Singing in the Rain, it wasn't that compelling to me because audiences today love their musical remakes. Beauty and the Beast was huge, Jungle Book. So uh, I wasn't Those sort of- animated to live action. I wasn't but... sort of that, whatever. I, and I really liked, I would have liked to hear a little more detail, but I really liked Stacy's idea about how this moment in filmmaking sort of matches the singing in the rain moment where everything's kind of in flux. It's an interesting time to look at the industry. So I thought that was pretty compelling. So I'm going with Stacy. Uh, thank you, Lon. One O Stacy. Yeah, I thought you both had interesting choices, um, and it it, uh, it it came down to uh, the execution because I, I thought they were both potentially valid. Um, Stacy, I thought you had some great information in regards to modernizing the story, and I just think of uh, like a timeless tale, like uh, A Star Is Born. I know that uh, that you didn't bring that up, but just it made sense to me your argument there, and um, yeah, I. I, don't, I feel like I didn't quite hear um, enough on this end as to why we need Wicked as opposed to, like Lon said, we just haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. So um, because of that, both interesting choices, both strong casts and directors, but uh, I'm going to go Stacy as well. So uh, Stacy is up. Stacy takes the point. Wow. Let's go to Danielle. Tell us about some dank memes. <laughs> dank memes. Okay, well, first off, going at the poll, and again, this isn't, you know, uh, it, it, it don't count, but it's great that y'all did it. Um, 74 to 25% in favor of Wicked. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, I will read, there were so many, like, really good tweets and stuff, so I'm going to try to blow through these. Please. Um, at CW underscore Bardshire says, I need them to make the musical of Grey Gardens into a film. <gasps> Methinks Amy Adams and Laurie Metcalf as the two Edies. That is amazing. That's good, yeah. Um, at Fast Dave 17, guys and dolls with Bruno Mars in the Sinatra <gasps> role and Michael Fassbender in Brando's role. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, who else? <laughs> Jack Shipley, like, I can't read all of these, but he has a great take on a postmodern dystopian um, version of The Sound of Music with the Von Trapps hiding underground. Wow. And um, San T.S. Daddy One, I don't know, um, <laughs> wrote Reboot Little Shop of Horrors with Hallis Seymour. Oh. 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 Suddenly had oh. We're um, casting you know, a scene. Yes. Someone oh. here was in a production of Grease. I don't know who it was, but could have been Hal Rudnick. Yes, in high school. <laughs> I want I wanted well, to well, 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 well. Yeah, yeah but uh -huh. uh, I was I, I wanted to be Kanicki because he gets to sing Grease Lightning. Yeah. But I ended up being cast as Vince Fontaine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not like a plum role he's <laughs> no. DJ. He does get to Mac on uh Marty. Oh, Marty at the dance. Oh. So uh, I'll, I remember that in my high school days. <laughs> Ooh, yes, indeed. Let's go to the third question. It oh. is 2-0 Stacy. What 
three MCU ladies, heroes or villains, would you assemble for a team-up movie? Wow, what three MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe ladies, heroes or villains, would you team up for a team-up movie? And we'll start with Stacy. Okay, so these are my three choices. I'm pretty excited about them. I'm gonna go with Valkyrie, Nebula, and Mantis, okay? So I chose Valkyrie and Nebula because they are gonna go butt heads the entire time and play off of each other really well. They're both really comp complex characters. They have motivations way beyond holy good or holy evil. Uh, they've got really interesting character arcs, which I want to explore more, and they're total badasses. Okay, so you got all that snark, you got their mischief, uh, you got their kind of evil good bad side going on. You need a good balance of wholesomeness and of sweet naivete. So I toss Mantis in there. She's going to come in. So she's constantly going to challenge anything Nebula and Valkyrie are going to do. She's going to try and steer them in the good direction. She might use their feelings against them in some kind of, you know, comical fight where they're trying to battle each other. And then she tries to get them to, you know, reveal themselves, cry, laugh, whatever, sensuality. Who knows what's going to happen there. Um, <laughs> and you want to see them change each other. Okay? So you're going to see how they all play off and come out the other end. And so those are my choices for the three. Great. Thank you, Stacy. Brianne, talk to us. I also chose Valkyrie as one of the ladies that I would like on my team, as well as Black Widow and Shuri. And I want to have these three ladies. First of all, Valkyrie and Black Widow, I feel like they they could have a little bit of issue with each other only because maybe one feels like they should be the leader over the other. Um, but sure, he's going to be there for that comedic relief and be able to be your tactical person that's going to be able to get everyone up and running. And if is and if necessary, is going to fight. It depends on also how we're going to do this. Like, are we going to use certain things from the comics or are we just going to use things from the movies? And if so, then that limits Shuri just a little bit because in the comics she becomes like a Black Panther at some point. But um, she still has a lot of kick-ass... Uh, skills as most of them do nunchuck skills you know other skills like that right on fight it out <laughs> ladies well i feel like we both picked valkyrie so that's kind of a wash okay yeah, well not necessarily <laughs> how would you each go about using valkyrie mm, how does valkyrie sure. factor onto your team well let's talk a little bit what the story could be i envision the story being that there is perhaps some sort of you know like uh, like sex trafficking or slave trade kind of thing going whoa, on whoa. where they are help there's a there's a, i know sorry going dark but there's a <laughs> Really sorry, guys. So there's a, group of, there's a group of women that are held captive, and they are trying to free them. So they okay. all feel... Like a kiss the girls, but with the sure. Avengers. But I with like the it. Avengers ladies, okay? okay? Sure. <laughs> I like uh, it. So, <laughs> Dana, we went there, guys. Damn, uh, the MCU got dark. So they, they all feel strongly that that's what they want uh, to accomplish, is to free these women. But obviously, they're all going to go about it in a different way. So you want to see all of them change and kind of see how they affect each other. Mm. So Valkyrie and Nebula, I mean, Valkyrie has like some raging alcoholic going on. Nebula has some extreme daddy and sister issues, a mm -hmm. lot of rage going on. So Mantis is going to use her, is it empathy powers, empathic powers to kind of, you know. Do nothing. Do, no, what? No. How is she going to do anything? If she needs to fight, there's no way she's going to, she's going to do group always, therapy. You don't is that what she's doing? She's the therapist. Physical skills to be a great hero in some of these stories. She's the therapist okay? for Nebula and that, that's Valkyrie. That's what they need. Otherwise, they're going to be, that's a they've waste. always gone rogue. They refuse to work with other people. They've been doing their own thing for so long. Also, you have Nebula and together. Mantis who both come from one property. Let's spread that out a little bit so that way we can see more people and also Black Widow needs to be in there she's been there from the beginning from Iron Man 2 she's the first woman that we've had on this team she deserves to be in she is getting a something. solo movie it, just because she's getting a solo movie doesn't mean anything and it, like that's ever gonna happen I mean sorry it I, who knows Ooh, if that's, that's gonna nice. ever happen I'm still waiting though I mean it only took 18 movies to get to Black Panther, so another true, 24, true. and maybe we'll get to... Okay, i got to stop. Um, but anyways. Uh, talk to us about uh, your team, Brienne, and how uh, what each one would do, how you'd use Valkyrie. 
gosh, uh, what each one would do. Well, it depends on like, uh, I didn't really What's think your of, story? Are you, uh, was are, I supposed to come up with a story? Cause that wasn't really on my agenda. You know what? Come up with one right now. Right, that's what something I do. To I like rival to think those, on the fly. Yeah, Improv, something to rival maybe. those, uh, <laughs> those MCU sex traffickers. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the sex traffickers. Um, sorry. Gosh, I just feel like Valkyrie would be the lead in this, especially because she was the one who approached Feige about it. And I feel like she used the correct term of Lady Liberators, even though I would like this to be like an A-Force film. Um, but I, why, at the same time, it's why is there only three? Why can't we pick even more than that? Because oh, because, that wanna, was the, because that's the question. I mean, otherwise we can, it would be like, chaos. join them all together. Okay. Oh, as pick, one okay. Are pick, we doing another co pick, right yeah, pick your nineteen. Pick your nineteen favorite <laughs> random characters. Uh, no, sure. I'm kidding. We, we sure, sorry. We, we need rules. Through. We need rules. I mean, you do need rules. Yes. If I could break the rules, I'd put She Hulk in there as well. You're going but off like this is not going to help your argument. It's argue. not going to help my argument, nor do I care. But I do feel yeah. like. Um, I do feel like it needs to be spread out if we're going to pick three, and for choosing two from the same one that just kind of it almost undermines all the other all the other females that are in these movies. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to need to hear a little bit more as far as a hmm. pitch, um, as what your film might feel like, or how your team might work in unison. Well, I would. I'm really hoping that there's going to be some sort of dance sequence because Black Widow is a trained ballerina. Oh. I'll have you know. Okay. I'll have you know. But uh, maybe with horses, because Valkyrie has a horse that she rides on. Oh, much like the dancing horses of Cavalia. <laughs> sure, sure, how? Greatest show in history. Yes. Um, so, are, are you able to give me any more well, of, as far as what definitely... your film might feel like and what the plot might? No, how? Be like. Because the problem is, is that I wasn't prepared for that. Okay. So if that's what you wanted, that's what you should have asked for. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. Uh, I will say that I did, I did not prepare my plot beforehand. I literally just thought of it and thought, well, what would the story be? So I came up with that on the fly, too. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to throw that out there. The reason I picked these three women, though, these three specific women, is because, yes, Nebula and Mantis are part of the same property, but I really went by personality and who's going to play off each other the best yeah. versus who's from what movie. I think Nebula's just too much of a loose cannon. She's going to kill one of your other characters before this movie even eh, gets finished. She doesn't kill anybody. She's, she's like maimed some people. Just a few. I don't know. Um, we who need would to back check okay, that one. Um, uh, who, would a who would the big bad be that they'd be going up against? Ooh. Brienne? The big bad? Yes. A madam. Someone's going to play a madam at this I like, hope it's Kate Blanchett. sex traffic thing. Sure. <laughs> is, there, is, there a, is there any kind of puppet master pulling the strings that we know from either the MCU or from the comics? Oh man. Uh, I mean, I guess it would be um, um, what Benicio del Toro's character, the collector. I mean, he collects things. He collected okay. two women. Hmm. We just saw that. So he's he's enslaving these go. women. So he's they're gonna try and go liberate these girls. They're gonna try and save the day. Interesting. And save, you know their gender and their race. Okay, uh, Brienne. No, I don't got it. I don't have it. Okay, it's just not there. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, all right, time. Wow. What an epic smackdown. Valkyrie sure. versus Valkyrie in what universe? Lots of women. I love it. Yeah, and, and um, there are so many great women to choose from, uh, and especially uh, from Black Panther. There were so many strong women, and you guys had some great choices. So this was a really difficult uh, decision for me because uh, I thought... Uh, you, uh, Brienne, you had a great takedown uh, of uh, Stacy uh, saying that uh, Mantis would uh, just be like a therapist. Uh, People, <laughs> everyone needs therapists, guys. It's not a um, big movie. And, yeah. And um, she wouldn't be able to factor into uh, the action quite as much. And uh, I don't feel like, I think it's possible to defend that, but I don't feel like you quite um, defended that. Uh, but, and then you pitched something that was really dark darker than anything i've ever imagined mm -hmm. in, it was amazing, uh, no. in the it was in amazing. the mcu Watched just you too many lifetime movies sorry but but then you brought in benicio del toro and i'm like yeah he he is this guy that like takes people prisoner and um he, he's unscrupulous that character and i love me some benicio del toro he was so great in star wars and uh so um that was really interesting but Brienne, um, yes, uh, simply because you didn't uh, 
put them in any kind of vehicle or weren't able to give me an mm -hmm. idea of where it would go. I loved what you set up and I love the fact that you targeted Black Widow who's so deserving of a film. Oh, this is tearing me apart, Lon! <laughs> <laughs> How's your sex life? <laughs> <laughs> I did not uh, hit those three women. <laughs> yes. At, at the end of the day, mm, simply because you painted the clearer picture of how uh, they would get on and how the movie would pan out, uh, I gotta go Stacy. But uh, you had some good points. Uh, Lon. Uh, I too, oh, oh, in terms of facts, uh, all the facts that I heard were good. Mantis is an empath, Black Widow is a trained ballerina, and Nebula has not killed anyone in the MCU to my knowledge. So, <sighs> okay. well done on all the points, <laughs> None everybody. That we saw. Uh, I was, I was really disappointed that we didn't get to hear more of a story around Valkyrie, Black Widow, and Shuri. I thought, in terms of the arguments that were actually made, I thought Brienne pretty handily won the round. Uh, I didn't hear a lot back about the point you brought up about Mantis would basically just be hanging around to be a therapist. Uh, I did. I, I agreed with Brian that Nebula and Mantis are both sort of from one property. There's so many women from so many of these different properties. That seems kind of a shame. And I thought uh, that Brian made a great case about Black Widow deserving her own movie. She's been in the franchise since the very beginning. Uh, so I'm going with Brian, even though we didn't get more of a fleshed out pitch. Bam. All right, let's go to the internet to decide. Danielle, what do we got? All right, so go into the polls, fresh, fresh, fresh polls. Um, leading with 51% to 41%, um, the folks have spoken and they like the team of Valkyrie, Black Widow, and Shuri. Brienne takes the point. Woo! Nicely Woo! done, Brienne point. Chandler. Uh, we got ourselves a ball game. Danielle, any other uh, cool stuff on the uh, um, P on the Stacey, pipeline? you're already being memed. Um, just so yeah. you know, oh. at David yes. Dranow, um, posted, Stacy, you got the best game face. I'd be hella intimidated. And then, like, just took a screen cap of you with a thing that says, nice argument, don't care. <laughs> from, like, today. Yes. They nice. were all, y'all Y'all were on them sick memes. And thank nice. you. I have been getting all of your corgis. I'm sorry. I haven't been able to answer in time. Nice. Um, and Iron Mike Wilson says, a badass spy movie with Black Widow, Shuri, and the Wasp. It would be, like, the MCU version of Charlie's Angels, except good. Whoa. Nice. Mm. I like that. Yeah, oh, so much love for Okoye, by the way. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Okoye brought it, um, a.k.a. Michonne, just badass in oh. Black Panther. Okay, nice. So we are at two for Stacy, one for Brienne. We're about to go into the speed round, but before we get into all that goodness, we got a little bit of a sneak peek. Coming up this weekend, dropping this weekend, world premiere... Serious questions about Harry Potter. We did this video before, serious questions about another franchise, Star Wars. Here come serious questions about Harry Potter. Let's check out this preview. Voldemort saw Muggles as inferiors and wanted to crush them under his boot. So shouldn't the good guys want the opposite? You know, to blend their worlds and live in peace? No, instead the good guys think Muggles are equal, but keep them separate, separate, but equal. Whoa! <laughs> that came back without even knowing it. Uh, <laughs> that was like, um, oh, are we back? <laughs> mm. Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm just oh. drinking my tea. <laughs> uh, before we keep going, uh, can I just jump in while you're digesting? Can uh, someone can someone make a gif of me being like, what the hell? We're back because we don't have sound of the uh, trailer yeah. that just ran. Okay. Uh, I am informed say? Nebula at one point pulls a Ravager pilot out of his cockpit and throws him to apparently his death on Xandar in Guardians of the Galaxy 1. I apologize. No one important. Nebula hasn't killed yeah. anyone that matters to us. Yes. Every, no, everyone know. matters. Let's Lon. put it then. Not that Ravager. Not to me. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Um, Ravager's tortured little Groot. He probably deserved yeah. to die. Lon hates the Ravagers. I'm very anti-Ravager, if you know All right, me, you let's know. not get political, Lon. Okay, <laughs> so it is 2-1. Now we're going to the speed round. The first combatant to get four points is going to walk out of here a winner. The other one is going to be hitchhiking back to the middle of nowhere. All right, uh, and... 
Now, Danielle, she will. Uh, she might chime in on something cool that she sees on the internet, but she will be judging from her own thoughts and perceptions, as well as Lon and myself. So the three of us will decide these speed round answers. Brianne Chandler, are you ready? No, I'm never Good. ready. Good. <laughs> Stacey Howard, are you ready? I am petrified I have to pee. Nice. Okay. Hold yes. on. Hold that thought. Uh, and let's jump into the speed round. Okay. First question. Now that Joss Whedon is out, yes. who should step in to direct Batgirl? Say your answer when you have it. Um, hold on. Say your answer oh, when you Patty have Jenkins? it. Patty Jenkins? Patty Jenkins, okay. Ava DuVernay. Ava DuVernay. Great. Mm. Patty Jenkins, Ava DuVernay. Um, Stacy spoke first, so you'll get 20 seconds, uh, then you'll get 20 seconds, and then you each get a 10 second rebuttal. Stacy, time begins whenever you speak. Patty Jenkins just proved that she could do an amazing origin story that hits it big at the box office with critics and with audiences with Wonder Woman. Why don't we give her another chance to do an incredible origin story with Batgirl? We haven't seen a lot of her yet. This is her first movie, a lot riding on it. She's proven she can handle the pressure. Can I argue anymore? That's all I have. <laughs> Time. Okay. Um, Patty Jenkins did a great job with Wonder Woman, but She's done a great job, and now it's time to let another woman do a great job. And uh, who else would I want to see but Ava DuVernay? I'm very much looking forward to A Wrinkle in Time. Just the visuals of the um, of the trailer alone make me excited. Make me excited for some what she could do with Batgirl. Ten second rebuttal. I prefer Patty Jenkins over Ava DuVernay because. Uh, I think she would handle a property that's already had a lot of its, you know, comic books and out versus Ava DuVernay is more into originals. Uh, Ava DuVernay is more into originals, and that's why I think it would be great to have an original Batgirl movie, someone with a fresh take on it from maybe even just ground zero. I don't know if Ava DuVernay is a comic book. Time. Wow. Uh, two great directors, compelling arguments. Danielle, talk to us. No. <laughs> no. Um, both of these were great arguments. Um, I, what really clenched it for me was when um, it was mentioned that Ava is better um, handling things that are original, which Wrinkle of Time is not necessarily an original. It is, it is an adaptation. But I liked um, that Brienne said that it would be really refreshing to have a fresh take on a character that's known so well from the comics. So I'm going to go with Brienne. 1-0, Brienne. Lon Harris. Uh, you know, I, I thought, uh, from based on what we heard, we know Patty Jenkins can sort of knock this kind of material out of the park, and the fact that she's sort of done it once and did it great, to me, didn't really seem like a great reason not to have her come back and do it. I'm going with Stacy. Boom. 1-1, one, one, right there. Uh, comes down to me, and, uh, yeah. Stacy, you made... A, uh, a great argument, as, as Lon said, that Patty Jenkins did knock this very same kind of material, um, a, a woman who we haven't uh, seen in her, in her own standalone movie, out of the park, uh, also DC. Um, but uh, you, uh, I, I thought you had a, a nice argument for Ava DuVernay and her, her mastery of visuals and the original take. And you got me more excited to see Ava DuVernay's fresh take on this, especially with Wrinkle in Time. Uh, so I got to give it to Brienne. And we are all locked up at 2-2. Two, two. Uh, the, the owl memes are coming fast and hard. <laughs> hoo, hoo. The owls have gone cool. Are they coming from? Uh, great. <laughs> Second question of the speed round. Fox Searchlight is developing a film based on flaming Hot Cheetos. What snack food would inspire the best movie? <laughs> Classic question. Sometimes I hate movies. <laughs> Sometimes I love snacks. Just kidding, all the time. What snack food would inspire the best movie? Five. Zebra cakes. Four. Pirate's booty. <laughs> All right, we have Zebra Cakes, we have okay. Pirate's Easy. Booty, <laughs> yes. Have a ball game. Okay, uh, Stacy, you spoke first. 20 seconds begin whenever you begin speaking. 
doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be a comedy. Zebra cakes could be zebras are being made into cakes, and the heroes of the zebra community have to stop them. Let's do a dark, gritty, real version of, you know, Soylent Green, but it's zebras. That's literally all I have. <laughs> Just gonna ride it out. <laughs> <laughs> A frightening movie, <laughs> Brianne. Oh, okay, so Pirate's Booty, I think we're gonna do this as a kid's film. Uh, so a kid's pirate movie, you know, Jake and the Neverland Pirates, let's bring that, make it even bigger, make it even better. Have them have to look for the Pirate's Booty or is the Pirate's Booty the fuel for them? I'm gonna let you decide if you want it to be the fuel or what they are looking for. But Pirate's Booty with Jake and the Neverland Pirates. Time, 10 second rebuttal. I don't have kids. I don't want to see a kids movie. I want to see a gritty, <laughs> realistic version of what would happen if it was like animals <laughs> with Soylent Green, okay? That would be insanely crazy. Okay, would that be like Animal Farm? Because I feel like that's animals I've and Soylent Green that. together. Um, but I, I don't want to see your movie only because that's very dark and yeah, sad. I love and it. I want to do half. Time. <laughs> All right. Wow. Like um, dark. Yeah, you got me thinking about like zebras going in like a meat grinder. Yeah. It was awful. It was yeah. frightening. Are zebra cakes like? What are zebra cakes? Uh, <laughs> it's like a, it's what? like a, it's a white cake and it's got vanilla cream in the oh, middle. Oh, it's like Hostess. Then, yeah, it's like yeah. Hostess. They're okay, so yeah, They're it's like not longer. even made out of meat. Like, okay, but so in that. But this movie, it is. Okay, that, you know what? It, it, it's very sad and frightening. <laughs> um, I, I gotta go with Brienne on this okay. one. Uh, Danielle. I, wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I love that you think that the executives of Zebra Cakes are gonna be like, you know what's gonna sell Zebra Cakes? Add some real zebra. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely what's gonna sell their product. Um, I, I really enjoyed both arguments as dark as they were, um, but I do have to say the idea of looking for a pirate's booty is fuel. Um, it was giving me some gummy bears vibes, um, and it, it, it sounded really fun and refreshing and not something uh, terrifying that would make me never want to eat cake again, so I have to go with Brianna. <laughs> I do think if they ever made the Zebra Cakes movie, Hal, you should have to go watch it with your mom. Yes, oh my please. God! Please. That yeah, I don't want to see that <laughs> that murder fest, that zebra murder fest. Okay, it is three two. Brienne, she storms into the lead. Mm. All right. Uh, by the way, Stacy needs this question to stay in the game. Brienne Thanks. takes it. She takes the match. Disney wants to bring back the Muppets for a new streaming series. What's the best Muppet movie? Mm. Muppets Take Manhattan? We heard Muppets Take Manhattan. I'm the sorry. Muppet Movie. The Muppet Movie. All right. Muppets Take Manhattan. Muppet Movie. Stacy, you spoke first. Begin when... Just clarification, sorry. When you say The Muppet Movie, you mean like the one from the 80s? Not 70s. the one that... Or 70s, not the one that... Jason not with Jason Segel. Okay. No. Okay, the you. original. The OG. Oh, yes. Okay, so we got the, the OG. OG. We've got Muppets Take Manhattan. You spoke first. 20 seconds begin whenever you speak now. <clears throat> Muppets Take Manhattan is Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. You want to see the Muppets go on an adventure. Okay, we already had an entire show where you see who they are and how they work together. We want to see them out into the world interacting with other people to see that juxtaposition, that weird you know, transition between Muppet and, and mankind. It just throws you for a loop and it really just explores the imagination. Time. The Muppet movie is better than Muppets Take Manhattan because this is a journey film. We are going from one place to another place. We are trying to make a movie while we are doing it and we're meeting a lot of different colorful characters along the way. And also Animal becomes really large at the end and I don't really understand why that happens, but I find it fascinating every time that it does. The end. 10 second rebuttal. I just think that Manhattan is one of the best places to hold a film because it has so much to offer and so much interaction with every kind of person that there is. So that's why I love that movie. I want to see the Muppets interact with every kind of New Yorker. The Muppets Take Manhattan, I don't want to see it because Kermit loses his memory and we don't want to see him lose his memory the entire time. We want to see him fun and interactive with all the other Muppets and kind of leading the force and we don't see that in Muppets Take Manhattan. Time. All right, let's go to Lon. 
Uh, well, I I mean, these are both great movies. I think we heard some pretty good arguments from both, but it just felt like Brienne had a lot better handle on the content of the movies and was able to use a lot more examples of great moments from her movie. So I got to go Brienne. That's 1-0 for Brienne. Daniel Radford. Um, I did, a lot of them were the same kind of arguments. Like it was, they were very similar. Um, I did like Stacy's argument. Um, New York really is the 60th character in Muffins Take Manhattan. Um, but I, I do also see like the allure of having Kermit. Um, but on this one, I had to go with Stacy. Okay, so it's tied up 1-1. One, one. Uh, yeah, you both had uh, some strong arguments for the movies uh, that you chose. But I thought Brienne was the only one who had the takedown uh, of uh, the other, per the strongest takedown of the other person's movie, uh, talking about uh, you know Kermit's memory and uh, how we we don't quite want that. And uh, at the end of the day, I gotta go, Brienne. Brienne, yeah! congratulations! You just won movie Woo! fights. Yes! 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 I feel like we need three to come back. Come on! Celebrate good times. Come on! Wow! Brienne, how does it feel? How does it feel to drink from the chalice of victory? Do I get to drink from the chalice of victory? Yes, when you what get home it? and pour something oh. into your own chalice. <laughs> okay, great. Chalices, not included. Yeah. It's but, very exciting, especially because I won a point on a round that I was like. That's my weakest one, looking at my notes. Well, welcome to Movie what Fights. Do you know? Sometimes the <laughs> unexpected you know? happens. Um, go ahead and uh, plug some stuff one more time. Plug some stuff one more time. You can find me and Stacy on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash missmovies, where we do two live weekly shows a week. Stacy and I do Six Degrees of Future Film on Wednesdays at 10.30 a.m. PST. I do Film Therapy on Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. PST. And that's where you can find us. You can find me on Twitter as well. Uh, Miss Movie. Nicely done. Uh, Stacy <laughs> Howard, you brought it. This was a great match. Yes. Uh, we went deep into the speed round, and uh, yeah, if it wasn't for her comeback, you would have walked out of here a champ, but instead, uh, you're roller skating oh, home. Man. Um, roller skates. <laughs> please go ahead and plug some stuff. Tell us where we can find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Stacy O. Howard. No E, no I, just Y. As Brian pitched beautifully, we do have a show together Wednesday morning, Six Degrees of Feature Film, talking movies all the time. Time. I feel like I need to admit that I've never seen a Muppet movie, so it was really hard for me Whoa. to argue that. Whoa. So I just <laughs> wanted to admit that to everyone. Um, but no, today was amazing. I was happy to go against my friend. I think we both had a really good time, and I was glad to be back in these studios. I haven't been here in a while. It was awesome. That was awesome having you. You had some great debates. You Thank both you. love Valkyrie. Yeah. And um, by the way, uh, if if you've been on movie fights and you haven't had to pull some crap out of your ass. <laughs> make an argument about something you haven't seen, then you haven't movie fought, yes. okay? Um, Daniel Radford. Hello. Um, you guys can find me here all the time, especially on Thursdays. Um, I have a podcast called At Tights Fights, or where you can find us on Twitter. It's Tights and Fights. It's about wrestling. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to um, at Metheus underscore L-A-A-N. I did my best. Um, Angie and Marco, two fans, just got engaged. Aww. So I want to go ahead and give them that nice little shout out. They're very, very cute and Aww. probably happy and marriage is great. Congrats, Angie and Marco. Juan <laughs> Harris, thanks for holding it down on the facts and the whatnots. My, always a pleasure to be here and discuss my hatred for all Ravagers. <laughs> <laughs> very anti-Ravager. They're very, very pro-Valkyrie. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very pro you watching. Thank you so much for uh, checking out some movie fights today. I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter, at Hal Rudnick. Instagram, at Hal Rudnick. Um, and, uh, yeah. Thanks, Billy Biz. Thanks, JTE, a.k.a. T E. Bye everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye. bye, bye. bye, bye.